So my name's John Tatro. I'm one of the early participants in the Gala Games ecosystem. I've been involved for probably about two years, long, long before Gala even had a platform. You know, it was so far, so long ago that, you know, it was really just an idea in the mind of um, our founders, Eric Shermeyer, Wright Thurston, and Michael McCarthy. But, you know, we've seen a lot of development happen in the past several years. And, you know, now now we have um, one game launched and we have several more games coming down the pipeline. So really the, the, the goal of Gala Games is to decentralize the billions and billions of dollars spent annually on gaming. Um, I didn't know this when I first got involved, but gaming is a huge industry. It's like a hundred and fifty billion dollar industry. So that's that's like how much you know um, money's flowing through gaming. But the problem with traditional gaming is that you know if I'm a gamer and I'm playing a traditional game and I put in you know hundreds or maybe thousands of dollars over the course of several years, if that game studio goes bye bye or I decide they come out with the, uh, I decided I want to play a different game that they came out with. The problem is, is that because a lot of these gaming items are stored on centralized servers, I can't extract all that time and value I put into the game and bring it into another game. And then blockchain aims to solve that. And that's one of the main um, goals of Gala Games is to really free all those um, in uh, in-game assets and give ownership back to the players. So Gala is uniquely positioned to be really one of the first AAA game developers to do that. There's been there's been a few other blockchain games that have tried to do this. Um, but the thing is, it's like they're not AAA game developers. They're kind of like crypto people that decided to build a game around their crypto project. But Gala Games is different because they're game developers who have a proven track record of building AAA games that are geared towards mass adoption. And when you combine that with, you know, the right blockchain team and always put game first, you know, we can really do big things and disrupt this industry. John, could you could you give an example of a couple of the games that these guys have created in the past that have already been successful? Yeah, actually I can. So let's see here. I got, so um, here's just a couple of the games right here. So the founder of uh, Gala Games is Eric Shermeyer. He was a co-founder of Zenga Games. So if you guys remember in the early days of Facebook, we had these games like Words with Friends, Mafia Wars, Farmville, Zenga Poker. I mean, like look at the amount of, you know, millions of users that played these games. The people who are building Gala Games actually pioneered the free-to-play mobile gaming industry. They they totally changed the game because before free-to-play mobile gaming, that model didn't exist. It was it was you buy a cartridge and you actually own the game, and that was it. But they developed a model where let's just create free games, and then we'll you know people can buy things within the game. But still, the problem existed that. People didn't actually own that. And so Eric Shermeyer, our founder, decided to, that's one of the, really the, the, the driving factors of, you know, what they're doing with Gala Games. It's such a tremendous opportunity. I'll just give you, give you a little example. So somebody commented on one of my posts the other day. He said he was playing this game for five years and he went to go sell his account to somebody else in this other gaming platform and they basically suspended his account. So he lost five years worth of like central server in-game assets that, that he had been accumulating. So his account is suspended indefinitely. All that time and money and effort he put into that, it's gone, it's gone. So this market of account selling with like Fortnite skins and all these other in-game assets, even though it breaks the terms and of conditions of traditional gaming, it's a $50 billion market, that secondary market, that black market. So, so what if we could create an ecosystem where we encourage people to do that by player ownership? What can that 50 billion turn into? 75 billion, 100 billion? 
150 billion dollar industry so right now there's a race to really be the first to to tap into that market and gala games is uniquely positioned to be able to do that because of you know what i just said they've they've broken into industries in the past and they're using blockchain to enable this um ownership of in-game assets yeah that's that's really cool so i know a few that have come try to come out and like do some games on around blockchain and stuff like that um do you know exactly how long they've been working on this project how old it is or anything like that so this project was an idea in the minds of the creators about two years ago so they've been working on it for about two years we really come out of stealth mode in the past year um you probably just starting to see a lot of you know stuff on social media about gala games now because we're kind of getting to that point where like okay what they're doing is making sense um you know they're they've done everything they've said you know people are making money people are being rewarded they have a game um gala games hasn't done any you know um advertising on their own so where we're at now has pretty much been done from you know person to person sharing um we did just ramp up our social media we hired a a chief marketing officer who's really given us a a social media presence you know kind of a face to the gala games and and that's really how how things grow through strong communities so to answer your question about two years they've been building this they're ramping up their development we have a medium blog where you know they're showing new people being added to um, our development team all the time and, and people from like other game studios that are kind of seeing the direction of the industry and, and and you know where it's heading and they want to kind of like join the revolution and you know because because gaming shouldn't be controlled by like huge corporations it could it should be controlled by the actual developers that are building the games and the gamers who want a specific type of game it shouldn't be controlled by all these big companies that are the only thing they really care about is you know trying to squeeze as many bucks out of the players as possible that's that's not a good model you know yep i fully, I fully understand and agree and you know once one company's done it like gala games that's just going to open up a massive industry right there i mean the gaming industry is massive like you've said i mean i i've personally spent thousands of dollars a month on games in the past so i've, I've been in that field before but uh did you kind of talk about the free, like we'll go into the, the, where people could actually join, create an account, not spend any money and like, how could they um, play the game and, and earn inside of the game? How does the, how does the game work and how would they earn a cryptocurrency from playing it? So from a, from a free gamer perspective, it, it's very simple. You need a, um, referral link and and once you get into the back office and create an account and a wallet i'll show you what it looks like here so it brings you over to your you know your gala games and you can you can play town star right now um it's a free farming simulator game um it doesn't cost a dime you can you can join for free and i'll just show you how this works there's a couple different servers Pretty soon there's going to be a ton of different servers um, because we're growing rapidly. But what it is, it's 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 a weekly competition with um, prizes tiered out across the top 100 in the leaderboard. Um, and they um, they give prizes in gala. They're actually doing another two day competition coming up this weekend and they're giving like thirteen thousand five hundred dollars in prizes for the top 10. So if you look here, we have a, a weekly active competition that literally just started. And then we have like a free play server where there's no rewards or anything. It's just like kind of a practice practice server. But, you know, it's very simple. You play now. I, I pick a location. You kind of want to pick a location near a city. Place town here. Enter my name. 
I'll just show you a little bit about how this game works and, and how you can make money in a sec. All right, so when you first start out, you start with like this town. It has a couple of things. It's a simulator, you know, you have a farmer who, who picks the wheat. He brings the wheat back to the silo. And, you know, if you look at this, it takes like a certain amount of seconds for this these wheat to grow. And, you know, these wheat have to be watered. And, you know, basically the idea of this is to make a profitable town or city, and then you could sell some of your inventory for kind of this in-game um, money. It's it's not cryptocurrency, but it's in-game money. So I can go ahead and uh, move this. You know, if I want to sell wheat to Atlanta, it loads the wheat into the truck, and then the truck takes off. And it comes immediately back quickly because I, I built my, my town near a city. So as soon as I click this, right, I get money added to my in-game. Oops. And also it gives me stars. So to win this game and to place in the ecosystem, you need to constantly be selling um types of products okay and you can see this is a leaderboard right now this game just started here so if you look at the top 10 there's already people taking off um it literally this just started today at 12 p.m so you can see like the top person has 890 stars and they got those stars by you know creating a town and but it, it gets pretty complex you can um you can, you know, combine wheat into, there's just so much here. Um, you can craft like more complex items that give you um, more stars and really these cities get pretty crazy. There's lots to do in here, but let me show you this. I wanna show you something cool. Let me just move this zoom thing out of the way here. So, so right here, right, this little treasure chest, this contains some of some of the NFTs, the non-fungible tokens that I've earned from referring other members. So if you refer a member, a free player, you get um, a Alpha Fountain OK. So I can go ahead and you know place my fountain right here, which I wouldn't want to do. I'd really want to place it over here. And what this does, if I place a fountain right here, it passively waters my crops. Because normally, this guy would have to go to the well. It takes time to bring the water over here and water the crop. So I can, I can use these fountains, blockchain items, place them in the game, and they give me a competitive advantage to harvest crops more quickly. And that's just one example of some of these items. And you own them forever. You don't lose them in the game. They're, they're, they, never, they really never leave your blockchain wallet. What Gala Games does, it, it can look into your wallet, obviously, because the blockchain is public and it can it can see that I have these fountains. Um, and there's other items too, like um, Simplex Sugar Canes, Farm um, Crane Bots. Crane Bots help, you know, build buildings quicker and give you comp competitive advantage. So that's just like one example of of how you can you know come into the game share your referral link get other players to play and earn these items and i'll show you over here too so this is a, a secondary marketplace called OpenSea. if we search town star if we search town star we can see what some of these stuff um some of this stuff is is trading for So let's take a look here. This is the, for referring one player who plays, you get this alpha fountain. Well, I guess I gotta sign into my wallet. This is all connected with MetaMask. It's a decentralized exchange. Well, I don't even wanna do that right now because I don't know if you'll see my password. You could uh, stop the screen sharing real quick, log in, and then uh, share the screen again. Yeah, I guess I could. Well, here we go. All 
All right, well, you guys can just edit it out. Let me see here. So when you're using this ecosystem, the, the cryptocurrencies can immediately just be transferred into your private key wallet, like MetaMask. Yeah, and so... So the, your, yep. your assets are safe, basically, when, when you're, they're in your private key wallet. Okay, so pretty much they're never stored on a central server or with another company or anything. It goes straight into your own wallet. Yes. So <clears throat> what I've done is because Gala Games provides a private key wallet, that means that with those keys, I can actually import them into my MetaMask wallet, which I've done. So not only do I have access to my Gala wallet from within Gala Games, but I've also imported that private key into MetaMask so I can interact with uh, this, you know, decentralized marketplace, or I can interact with, you know, Uniswap and trade out for other ERC-20 tokens. Okay. Again. Yeah, so just to be clear while we're while we're going over this, these are items that you earn inside of the game from literally just referring people to play the game. Nobody nobody on either end had to purchase anything. It's just free members referring other free members. You get these items that you're showing right here that you can then go and sell on the secondary market for actual cash, correct? That is absolutely 100% correct. You can you can come into the game, not pay a dime, play the game yourself, refer other free players to come in and do the same thing, and you're awarded these fountains. Now let's take a look. A month ago, the last one sold for 35,000 gala. Let's just take a look at, you know, what 35,000 gala is. All the markets are down right now. So that's 510 bucks. So from referring one other free member to play the game with you, they you can essentially earn about $500 for selling a fountain on a secondary market because that one actually officially sold for $500, correct? Correct, absolutely. And they all sell for different prices. I mean, it's not like an exchange where there's just like buy and sell orders. A lot of people are becoming interested in this and a lot of people are serious about playing Townstar and they want to, you know, get their hands on some of these fountains and they want to get their hands on some other in-game items that are going to give them a competitive advantage in the game. I mean, especially when there's, you know, $13,500 at stake. First place in the 48-hour tournament we're having this weekend gets $5,000 in Gala. So people are kind of going nutty. They're, they're serious. We actually have people who do this full-time in third-world countries that just make a living with it. It's absolutely incredible. And, and the fountain is only really one item. I mean, we can, you know, you can take a look at some of this other stuff here. We'll go back to Townstar. John, could you give us an example of what is the the most highest price item that's been sold within this ecosystem so far? Sure. So that was that is for our upcoming game, Miranda. So let's take a look at this. There's been one official sale. So we'll go over here. Um, here, let's just click this. Open up Mirandus and then go to, click on Mirandus right here. And then go to activity. Watch this, this is gonna blow your mind. Sales. We'll go to sales. Okay. So let's take a look. These are all the sales. Okay. How do I how do I filter highest sales? I'm not actually sure how to filter highest sales here. Price history. Because I saw on YouTube. And you actually shared an article on this too, but it was about a piece of virtual real estate that sold yeah. for over a million dollars in the game. Yeah. Yep, that's absolutely right. Let's just scroll down. So verbally I'll tell you, but when I get to it, you'll see it. I just don't know how to filter out by order of highest sale. So essentially 
one of the castles within the game of Miranda sold for $800,000. And you're then shortly talking after, 800,000 USD, correct? Yeah, it actually, yep, it sold for $800,000 in USDC. That was the final price. So I actually. Yeah, and that's that's crazy. So I want I want everyone to kind of understand as well when we're talking about all this stuff, we're talking about a game, a company, an idea, and everything that's literally brand new, and pretty much never been done before. And you know, I just want to kind of paint the picture of the future and what this can turn into. Like this kind of money is already being made. These kind of results are already there. Like this kind of attention is already on this, but imagine when this becomes massive and when this becomes like, you know, some of those big games out there like League of Legends and all the other games out there where people are, where there's literally players spending millions of dollars themselves on the games and stuff like that. Like this has massive potential and that's that's the big thing that I see with it. Yeah, I remember when we, we met um, Eric and Jason and Wright Thurston and the guys behind us, because these guys have been in the gaming industry for years and years and years. They were telling us about how there's a lot of the the gamers are from these places in like Dubai where there's these families are just oil company billionaires. And there's a lot, there's a big market for these people that are out there that are just heirs to these huge fortunes. And they they play these games and they literally spend millions and millions and millions of dollars within these the gaming ecosystems already. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not like we're reinventing the wheel here. I mean, blockchain aside, the in-game asset market is just absolutely huge. But like, you know, w- what we're doing here is changing the game now where people can have, a, you know, ownership of it. You know, this, this market already exists, but until now it's been centralized in game studio servers. So think about what's going to happen when you know, maybe Miranda's launches and, and Gala Games starts producing games that are comparable, if not better, to the current hit games that are out there right now. It's kind of like a no-brainer where people are going to go. Like, why would I play a traditional game and just waste all my time and money into a black hole where I can play a game that's, you know, similar, if not better, and actually get paid and own my assets. One one unique feature about Gala Games is they're like re- they're really geared towards, you know, making their assets usable across their whole ecosystem. For instance, like that that fountain or whatever. Maybe that'll have a use in Mirandus, the upcoming game Mirandus. So it's like your items can't, you know, are not just going to be used in one game. They're really going to make them useful to be used across their whole ecosystem. And what's even cooler with blockchain, you know, if, you know, because it's public, like even if you had like a crypto kitty or something like that, if Gala Games wanted to, and you had a crypto kitty in your wallet, they could give you a use case for your crypto kitty, which is totally from a whole different company if they wanted to. So there's like lots of room for different collaborations and it's just it's just amazing and beautiful what what the blockchain can do within the um, gaming space. Yeah, and I just want to touch on one thing, you know, this what Gala Games is doing, the the big gamers are already looking for this. There's already a huge market looking for this, even though this has not existed up to this point because so what's crazy is Ethereum smart contracts were actually created by a gamer who spent pretty much his life on games and right. <laughs> he spent a bunch of money on a game, got his character leveled up super, super high. And then they nerfed his account pretty much where it wasn't as valuable as what he paid it to become. And they just one day clicked the button, nerfed his account and got super upset, created smart contracts where you know it was decentralized and someone couldn't just change the rules on their own as you know smart contracts once they're created once they're launched they cannot be changed so the gamers are already looking for stuff like this but um you know with the with the free stuff if there's anything else that you can think of that people would get value from for like an investment purpose or or um just to make money with not an investment purpose to make money with or anything like that um we'd love to to cover that but then we'd also like to get into some of the paid 
ways they can get into gala games with like the notes, for example, that I know we're going to be talking about. And if there's any other examples of ways they can pay to invest into the gala company, if they believe in it enough to, to make that decision on their own and what they could benefit out of that. Absolutely. So there's like a ton of ways. There's even more from a free gamer perspective. So if uh, not only you get fountains when you bring in people into our gaming ecosystem for absolutely free, you actually get a hundred gala. So if you got like a hundred people, that'd be like a thousand gala, you know? Um, so you get fountains and, and look, let's just re revisit the fountain tier for a sec. I haven't even showed you this. So these fountains are tiered out. Um, so for one referral, you get the basic fountain, 10 referrals, you get a, a little bit of a better fountain, which gives you more of a, it's just a stronger fountain. 50 referrals, you get an alpha fountain, great. And then 100 referrals, you get an alpha fountain, majestic. And these are selling for even more than what we looked at prior. Um, they yeah. give you a serious competitive advantage. So you get the fountains, and then you also get 100 gala when somebody jumps on board. And, um, and also, if they decide to like purchase a node, which we'll talk about in a little bit, you get like a massive gala bonus. Um, both instantaneously and residually. So there's there's plenty of um, opportunity here. There's opportunity um, to, you know, buy and sell on this secondary market. Like say for instance, you got one of those fountains, all right? And uh, you came in here and sold it for some cryptocurrency. You could buy into some of these other items here and, and get into like a buying and selling and, and trading thing. Because what happens, I'll show you what's been happening. It's important to kind of understand because it's a it's a way to get involved early if you can understand the direction that the ecosystem is going. So we have a store, okay? So we have a store inside of Gala Games where they're kind of doing like a um, a land sale. Um, this was the Citadel of the Sun that sold for eight hundred thousand, and this is the second one that hasn't been officialized yet, but it sold for one point six million. But if you scroll down, the, the lower we get here, um, you know, you begin to see like the, the prices of these things. I mean, 1.4 ETH for this ranching hamlet. What's been happening is people are getting hip to what Gala Games is doing. So they're trying to position themselves by buying some of these deeds or also buildings. And if you scroll way down to look at, look at all these are sold out. What's been happening is People are like buying this. And as soon as it sells out on the secondary market, they're instantly valued at at least three times the amount that they were bought here before because they're a scarce asset. So potentially, I mean, there's still some room to come in here. If you can come in, I'll give you an example of how this can look. If you come in as a free gamer, you start sharing like crazy because it's a free game where you can even win money for doing good. You start earning these fountains, you sell off your fountains on OpenSea so now you have some Ethereum, you know, you can come in here and, and you know, buy some of these, these lower ones. I mean, you're looking at all, it's only 0.2 ETH for a woodworking stand or a bread, a bread stand is 0.2 ETH also. So you can come in here, nab up some of these, some of these um, NFTs and then just hold on and wait till they sell out and 3X on, on a secondary market and sell them or even better yet, you can hold on to them until Miranda's launches at the end of this year, beginning of 2022. And you'll be able to, there's a real life ecosystem. There's going to be a real life ecosystem within the land, the world and lands of Miranda's where, you know, people, if I had a bread stand, for instance, I could be making and selling bread for Gala or real cryptocurrency. So there's like tons of opportunity to get your foot in the door on a free level or even just spending a couple bucks, but it's, it's, it's definitely not necessary to spend any money. Um, does that make sense? Yeah, it yep. makes full sense. And, you know, just for some people possibly watching this who are thinking like, why would anyone spend money on this? I completely understand your, where you're coming from with that. Cause that's what I thought when I first saw the first, you know, NFT ever in my, like, you know, there's, 
there's sites out there that do NFTs all the time. It's not just called games. And, you know, you look at them, you're like, why would anyone spend this? And all of a sudden you refresh the page and the entire site sold out. because Some guy just came in with millions of dollars and bought it all. You know, like it's a real market out there and it, there's a lot of money in that market. I, I personally know people who do it and make some great money with it as well. So yeah, it's a, uh, it's something I would, you know, highly recommend looking into to kind of understand it. So as, as far as a, um, from a, from a free gamer perspective, there's let's, uh, you know, recap what we talked about. You can come in for free, play the game. Um, and just by doing that, you get a hundred dollars just for playing. If you get good at the game and, and start placing in the leaderboard, you can win prizes in the Gala cryptocurrency that could be traded out for any other cryptocurrency. If you refer, you know, you can win the fountains and also Gala that we just talked about, like you could trade for other things. Um, so, you know, apart from that, there's ways to even participate by supporting the network and how that's done is through the Gala Games nodes. All right. So I'll just read this right here. The Gala Games network is supported by users just like you who operate a Gala node from their home computers. By buying a license to operate a Gala node, you open up opportunities to receive rewards for your contribution to the network. This can include Gala, limited edition NFTs, and opportunities to help the Gala Games ecosystem grow. So very simply, it's a node license that you buy. It's a one-time fee. Um, the nodes are steadily increasing in price a hundred dollars per every 100 sold they started off at like a thousand bucks a while ago and you know as more have been bought they've increased by the rate of a hundred dollars per node um owning a node is a very simple process it's just a very simple user interface this is this is my son's node right here he currently has six nodes and, and really all it does is it just it runs in the background. It doesn't do any proof of work. It, it, it's really just a very light piece of software that you need to run for six hours per day and you receive, you know, gala rewards. And also you could possibly be randomly distributed NFTs. And as more games come out in the gala games network, um, you're awarded, you know, um, new NFTs for those games. What's cool is Gala Games is open to other game studios bringing games into our network, but the, the people who have the final decision on that are actually the node owners. We have a voting mechanism here. Um, there's currently no active polls, but you know, if Gala Games is talking to another game studio and you know, they're talking about bringing a game in, they'll, they'll push out that to the node network to actually vote on like whether or not we want something like that um, within our ecosystem. And, and not only uh, voting, there's eventually going to be a governance system built in to this that even expands far beyond bringing games into the ecosystem. We're gonna be voting on things like how the distribution model looks you know, further down the road. If, if it's not looking right or it's a little off balance, you know, um, they can push out um, more ideas that we can vote on as a community. It's really community driven and community led, but but obviously developer built. Um, okay. And as far as these nodes, could you kind of maybe talk about what it is these nodes are doing as of right now? Like how, like someone buys a node, they turn it on, how is this node making them money like what tasks are these nodes doing right now and then also what do they have planned in the future for these nodes to do to be able to even increase that higher and and lastly just is, is there a limit on how many of these nodes there are yep absolutely um without getting too complex into like everything about the nodes keeping it like really simple and sweet uh the gala node is actually doing nothing besides storing a decentralized copy of our NFT ledger. So at this point, like I said, there's no proof of stake, no proof of storage, no proof of work. It's really just acting like a node on the network. 
So in the future, these nodes will eventually, as they start building out our node ecosystem, they'll start to do things. Let's scroll down a little bit. They'll start to do things right here. The entire system will operate on three basic consensus mechanisms, which we don't have right now, okay? Um, so there's going to be a proof of work mechanism where the nodes can begin to, you know, offer like hashing power to actually process and verify transactions within our games. So player to player transactions, you know, um, probably on site, some type of second layer that's within our ecosystem. Um, a proof of stake. Um, this is proof of availability is kind of like what we have right now. We don't have a proof of stake mechanism. Um, <clears throat> and also proof of storage. So if you have, you know, uh, you know, a terabyte of, of storage available, you can, you know, offer that. And it's going to be, it's going to be built in a way where it's, uh, we're not always going to need storage. There could be like a time of the day where, where we're going to need more proof of work than proof of storage. And the way the, the, um, the way it's going to work is that it's going to reward what's needed the most. So, you know, me being a node owner right now, it doesn't make sense for me to buy like a bunch of extra storage because I don't necessarily know that that's going to be what's rewarded the most in the future, in the future, especially if it's changing on a minute to minute or, you know, day to day basis on, you know, what types of uh, consensus mechanisms are needed the most at any given time. With the nodes, there's going to be 50,000 of these grandfather nodes. There's going to be there's going to be three types of nodes. There's going to be grandfather nodes. That's what's being sold right now. There's going to be 50,000 of them. And get this, the node license themselves are going to be tokenized. And what that means is, they're going to be put onto the blockchain as an NFT. So if I, you know, if I have two nodes today, and you know, all of a sudden, these things are tokenized in the future. Um, I could potentially keep one node that I have and then sell the other node license on a secondary marketplace like OpenSea for maybe even more than I bought it for. Um, after these grandfather nodes are gone, okay, there's going to be what's called like a paid node. It's going to be a, it's probably going to be like an, you know, an activation price and a monthly fee or, or they can be like rented out. And then there's going to be like a freemium version of the node where you basically, you know, get like a percentage of what a grandfather node would do. Just to give you an idea about like the nodes and, and the future of these grandfather nodes. So like right now at this point, we're only seeing like really a few percent of like what's gonna be coming in the future. So we have a, a daily distribution of Gala, that's it. And then we have like a few NFTs coming, but eventually, what this is going to look like for a node owner is just imagine when we have, you know, a handful of games that are starting to onboard like hundreds of thousands, if not millions of users. Okay. And we have more games coming out each game. Townstar plans on having its own cryptocurrency. Mirandis plans on having its own in-game currency and all these other games plan on having their own in-game currency. So, what that could look like for a node owner is a lot more lucrative than what it is at this current point in time. So just imagine a future where you're getting Gala, you're getting box coin from Townstar, you're also getting like the coin from Mirandis, whatever that's going to be, it hasn't been built out yet. And not only that, you're getting NFT drops from each of these games now. Just imagine five years from now, we got like 20 games or 10 games maybe, this is hypothetical, all dropping coins and NFTs that can be traded on the secondary marketplace. So it's gonna look a lot better than it does right now at this point in time, but I think it's really important to understand the vision of what that'll look like in the future. Hey John, I had a, a question. Um, you mentioned about the, the different cryptocurrencies that are used within the games. Um, from what I understand and in Gala, that's already implemented with Gala coin and you can trade that on these these other exchanges. Could you show us an example of that? Um, so technically like Gala can't be used in the game yet. 
Um, okay. It's just being it's being it's being traded on you know market markets. Was that your question? Like, yeah. You trade Gala. So yeah, like right now, I I use CoinGecko because Coin Market Cap doesn't have the right data. Okay. So if you look like right now, these are the markets where our coin is being traded. It's being traded on Uniswap, and there's a few different pairs on um, BitTrue, a BTC mm -hmm. pair, a USDT pair, and an XRP. There. And even with Gala on Uniswap, there's even like a USDC pair, I believe. So there's plenty of different places to trade it. So to, to kind of describe a little bit more about like Gala token, Gala token is going to be like our ecosystem wide coin. But each each game is going to have its own unique cryptocurrency. We're just not okay. seeing that yet because we're still early. You know, you might think, oh, I'm late to the party, you know, nodes have been running for a year right now, but, but when you begin to understand that, like, we haven't even scratched the surface of what we're trying to do, um, you know, so for instance, if, if, if I acquire a bunch of in-game money in Townstar and I want to get that over to Mirandis, I would, I would be able to, you know, trade that in the future, trade because it doesn't exist, I would be able to trade that for Gala and then move my Gala over to Mirandis and then buy into like Mirandis cryptocurrency. You know, each game is going to only allow you to buy stuff in the game with the in game currency. So it kind of gives Gala, you know, more value because it's almost like the in between coin for all these game currencies. Like a bridge currency. Like a bridge currency. Kind of kind of like, kind of like what XRP is trying to do with central banks and bridge bridge currency all the money in the world right but we're not even seeing that right now sean but i just you know i i need to be clear that like that stuff's coming down in the future you know it's it's just a matter of time gotcha they uh one of the things is like gala games is like blew up so fast that the development teams like scrambling to you know really finish up townstar and get more servers going but at the same time not take away from like the development of Mirandis and then also like the back office site itself, you know, needs to constantly be developed and, you know, we got the blockchain development that's happening. They're scaling up. Um, you know, if, if you've ever been in the development space, you know, things always take time and it takes a, a lot of, you know, people putting them in the right places for, for things to happen fruition and and they're doing that now seeing new developers come on um all the time so it, it's really simple to to purchase a node you know you can come in here and you just click buy now um you take a look right here there's three different currencies that gala games accepts they accept gala ethereum and basic attention token which is the brave browsers um native currency Yeah, so real quick before we, while, while we're on this right here, so the grandfather node you talked about them, they started selling about $1,000 each. There's 50,000 of them. Um, how, like, do you know approximately how many are already sold? You're about to go over, you know, what the cost of a node is right now. And then also, you know, they started off at 1000 bucks. How much are they selling for right now? And how much are they expected to like the very last one to sell for and like why should someone get a grandfather node now instead of waiting for the other ones if that makes sense so they started selling for about i think the earliest earliest of us got ours for like i think it was like 500 bucks for it was only for a couple days um this is our discord we have a bot that kind of constantly tells us you know the current price and how many are sold so if you look right here um this is the absolute last sale so 22,499 nodes have been sold the current price is 5,500 um we just moved tiers so if you see the last one before that sold for 54 and then now it's selling for 5,500 and there's a hundred nodes left at that price. And then once those hundred nodes are sold, the next price will be 5,600. So if you look at that, we have 50,000 nodes total 
almost half of them have been sold. If you do the math, right, and, and you look at a $100 increase for every 100 sold, that would top out at the last 100 nodes being sold for like $33,500 or something like that. And, and you must be saying to yourself like, my God, who in their right mind would ever pay that much for a node? Well, if you if you think about what I just talked about with like all the stuff that's coming down the pipelines, like there is going to be some people that buy nodes at 10 grand, 20 grand, 30 grand, especially if, you know, the way I look at it, it's like this. You guys remember the world before cell phones? Like there was a point in time when like beepers existed. There was no such thing as a cell phone. And I look at owning a node as owning a cell phone tower on the first network before people even knew what a cell phone was. Just think about that. Think about a person who got a knock on the door from like AT&T and they're like, hey, I notice you have a lot of property. Uh, we, we wanna put up a cell phone tower. And you reluctantly agreed. You kind of understood like what it was. Imagine what that looks like now, several years later, getting those rewards, getting those royalties from you know, AT&T putting a tower on your property. I kind of look at that, although it's different, I look at it like the same thing, like we're about to really disrupt a $150 billion industry. So what it, what it, what it's gonna look like to have a, a node on the first decentralized network of that industry, of, of, the, of the network that's gonna disrupt that industry. You know, I'll tell you this, the people that got in first, and I don't want to say this to make you feel bad or make you feel like you missed out, but just to give you an understanding of the first people that got involved with Gala Games and purchased at least one node, they've earned about $50,000 in value to date at current price combined with Gala and NFTs. You know, Gala Games being at such the, the beginning still even if a person purchased a node uh, several months down the road at 10 grand, what's that future going to look like in five years when we've totally disrupted this industry and now traditional gaming companies aren't even profitable anymore because nobody's playing them. You know, from the words of our, of our CEO, Eric Shermeyer, he sees that there's going to be a, a point in time in the near future where gaming is all of gaming is going to be on the blockchain there's just going to be no other way so it's like i chose to you know purchase one of these nodes cell phone tower if you will you know before this thing goes mainstream which i believe it will if that makes sense yep yep, yep. it fully makes sense so you know i just kind of want to uh, talk on that real quick you know the nodes selling for about 5,000 right now, give or take a little bit, um, going towards 6,000. They're gonna sell for about 30,000, you know, on the last ones to be sold on, on directly from the company. After that, they go to the secondary market where they're probably gonna increase even more in value. But what I really want people to understand when they look at that and they're like, oh my God, 5,500, that's a lot. If they're selling in the future, for 30,000 or even on the secondary market for 50,000 or more, the reason people are buying them, and again, we can't say it now because it's in the future, but the reason people are buying them, if they're buying them at that point for that much, it's because they're, they are producing a profit at that price still. People don't just buy them for fun, okay? People don't just throw $50,000 out for fun. They're doing it as an investment when it comes to a node. So they're doing it for that reason. If they are profitable at thirty or fifty thousand dollars at that point, imagine how profitable it is for someone who bought it at five thousand dollars. Just to give you a little bit of an idea of where we are now to the future, I always like to look um, long term. You know, say it's say it's only doing twenty bucks a day or whatever it's doing right now. The thing is, as this scales up, there's still only a certain amount of nodes on the network. Period, and they are going to be doing more and more transactions and what might be $20 today after you counter in all the token price going up, the other token prices going up as the whole cryptocurrency market goes up. Plus the fact that they're doing more, the nodes are doing more. 
maybe that $20 today could turn into $200 a day or even more or less. Again, you don't know, but I just kind of want to talk on that future right there. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's like you look at even like Bitcoin, you know, oh, it's $10,000. It's too expensive to get in. You know, look, look now. You know what I mean? I think that's kind of where you're getting at. Like, even though it seems like it's expensive right now, you know, you take a look at like the people behind it, like what the future roadmap looks like. And you can like instantly do math, you know, what could that look like in the future? Like, what if I'm not only getting Gala token, I'm getting all these other currencies that all have an increasing in value, you know, over the next several months to several years. Um, one other thing I think I need to point out, which I didn't touch on is these nodes eventually are going to be processing in-game transactions. So what I mean by that, I mean, player to player transactions. So if me as a player in Mirandis or any games, you know, going out into the future, if I want to, you know, send anything, a few Gala, an ETH, a couple game assets to another player, then there needs to be a decentralized network that is processing and validating those transactions. And that's exactly what our node roadmap encompasses so just imagine if you will like if gala games pulls off what they intend on doing and makes a hit game that is able to onboard and have millions of daily active users all transacting within the ecosystem so now not only do you have node owners earning gala nfts from a variety of games but they're also capitalizing on the transaction fees within our ecosystem that I think is going to be a lot more lucrative than the coins itself. Like that simple math, $150 billion industry, you know, even just a small percentage of that ends up being a lot, you know, and that doesn't exist right now, but that is in the future roadmap. So it's just another example of, you know, coming $5,500 out of pocket right now, like what that'll look like in the future. And, um, you know, obviously there's no guarantees, but that's, that's a risk I took and it's already paid off. You know, that's a risk Sean's taken and it's starting to pay off. And, you know, there's a lot of people that are really excited about this project. And, uh, I love, I love, I love being first in disrupting an industry. There's nothing better than it. You know, we've all, everybody who's in the crypto space, like we're the first people before the institutional investors. And it's like now within the crypto space, we kind of have this unique opportunity where we're seeing blockchain about to disrupt gaming. And like, guess what, guys, we can be part of the ecosystem that does it, you know, just like that guy who got that cell phone tower on his property and is sitting pretty right now because he's been collecting checks for the years that cell phones went mainstream. Exciting stuff. Yeah. And I fully see it. So, um, I was gonna get a node right here on this call, kind of walk through the process. And so everyone else can also see as I'm gonna walk through the process of how to get one of these nodes, so. Sure, you want me to stop share so you can share your screen? Yeah, that works. Okay. Yeah, I just got mine. Uh, John helped me get mine. It, it was pretty quick. It, it took about 15 minutes for me to get my node set up. Yeah, so I will share my screen and just go ahead and walk me through this. So I've already uh, created, a, created an account to make that part quicker. That's super simple. There'll be a link you can get somewhere around this video to be able to sign up um, and get your account created. But once it's in, you just simply come over, I'm assuming click on nodes, right? Yep. Okay. All Let's right. Get node. Right here by now. Yep. Okay. And then you can choose the currency, do Ethereum. Doesn't matter which one you do, they're all the same price no matter what currency, correct? That's right. There we go. So it is 3.636 Ethereum as of right now. Let me make sure I got that. Yep. And you want to keep in mind, Cody. Um, you want to include a little bit more because gas fees are totally insane right now. You got to consider okay. gas fees and also slippage. So if the if the ETH price moves, 
like either if it moves down, it means the node's going to cost more than that. If the price moves up, it's going to cost less than that. So um, yeah. you always want to include like a couple hundred bucks extra. So maybe like 3.65 instead? Um, I would just do 3.7 just to be safe. I mean, worst case scenario, you get some left behind in your own private key wallet. It's like it's not okay. going anywhere, you know? Um, so just to make sure people know if you send extra, you don't lose that extra. Right. So and if you send too little, what happens? So if you send too little, you basically need to send more and it's going to cost you another gas fee. So okay, but works. you don't lose it. Yeah. Okay. So because this, so Gala Games, you can't pay from an external wallet. You actually have to send ETH to your internal wallet. And then once you go through the node purchase process, it draws ETH from your internal wallet. Okay. So I'll go ahead and send this to myself. Of course, uh, you know, I just need to say that, say this for like all the new people out there that are, you know, signing up and, you know, setting up their wallets. We need to make sure we're properly storing our seed phrase and transfer code because it's not controlled by the company. So meaning if you lose your password or if you lose your 12 words, there is nothing that the company can do for you to recover that. So we really need to treat our seed words, our seed phrase, our private key, like a bag of gold coins. You know, you're not gonna leave a bag of gold coins out on the counter. You gotta know exactly where it is and you're gonna keep it safe. Yeah, I want people to also understand that that's not just a Gala game thing. That's anywhere that you set up a wallet with private keys, it's all that way. So always treat your private keys like that. Okay, let me send this. <clears throat> All right. that address just go there we go so 3.7 to be safe make sure that's correct before I do it yep okay I just sent it. So once I've sent it, where do I go to? Oh, just that? head up to your inventory tab and then you can just kind of monitor your wallet. And wait for that to land in there. So if you oh. click on ETH, just probably take a few minutes to um, arrive. Okay, so I'll just kind of keep refreshing until it shows up. Yep. Sounds good. It might shut up in, a, in about a minute and a half, I think. Yeah, Ethereum's a lot quicker it's pretty than quick. uh, Bitcoin. <laughs> Bitcoin, luckily. <laughs> yeah, the, the the whole scalability issue with Bitcoin, way too slow. Yeah. Okay, so we'll just wait a second. So after this, I will go to which part? So after this, once we see that it's, you know, in your wallet and confirmed, you just click on the nodes tab up top and then go through the, the purchasing process. Okay. Pretty simple. And uh, one question I had, you said the nodes had to run for six hours to get rewards. Um, what if someone, is there any benefit of running it longer than six hours? So at this point, there's no benefit. There's no benefit if somebody runs it constantly or for just six hours, or if somebody has a supercomputer or the crappiest computer in the world, there's no difference um, because they're really just doing the proof of availability and you know storing that copy of the ledger. But eventually, um, like we talked about before, there'll be you know other consensus mechanisms you know, that you can be rewarded for offering storage, um, staking, 
um, proof of work. Okay. So eventually you could be rewarded for longer than six hours or upgrading a computer or having a dedicated computer or something like that. And, but it won't limit you to that. You can do that optionally or you can continue doing it the same way as right now, correct? Right, right. Yeah, This this the way it's going right now isn't going to go away. They're just going to add more um, consensus mechanisms to it. I mean, because we don't really need them right now because, you know, Mirandus isn't even built. We're not doing player-to-player -player transactions yet. You know, we don't need storage to actually host some of the parts of these games yet. We're still very early. John, could you explain the affiliate program as far as like oh, yeah. what you get oh, yeah, if, totally if you refer forgot. people to get nodes? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I totally forgot about that. So. So you don't even need to own a node to participate on in the affiliate program. Um, so basically what it looks like, if, if you share your referral link and you get a referral that purchases a node, you get a one-time bonus of basically 10 times what a node would earn that day. So it's basically you get a one-time 10x. Then every day after that, that your referral is running their node, you get 10% of what a node would earn. And that goes on two levels. The residual goes on two levels. The direct is only across your first level. And then you can build your, your line, your front line, well, your, your first line and your second infinitely wide, correct? Yeah, yeah, no, no limits. So it's scalable to make a lot of money that way. Absolutely. Okay, so if some, if I referred someone who had a node and just say that that node was making them, you know, 50 bucks a day for easy numbers, I would get $5 a day out of that pretty much is what you're saying. Correct. Yeah. For, for one time you would get 500 if it was making 50, cause you're getting that 10 X bonus one time. And then every day after you, you get $5. Yeah. Which, and and that, that already happened to me actually, cause the first day I bought my node someone in my network also bought a node and that day uh, my node did around 26 dollars worth of cryptocurrency but because someone in my network bought a node i actually earned around 260 something dollars worth of cryptocurrency because it 10 x yeah that's crazy not sure why this is not showing up still yet usually ethereum's a lot quicker yeah mine was quick yeah, it could have been. What wallet did you send from, Cody? What type? Uh, Crypto.com. That's what I use for pretty much every day. Yeah, it could have just been on their end. Like maybe their fee was like less than normal. And maybe it wasn't quite yeah. enough of a fee to be included in like the first block. I mean, I'm sure. Yeah, their was, fee was 0 0.015 ETH. So I'm not quite sure what that is in dollars right now. All right, well, hopefully this comes through in the next minute or two so we don't make the video too long. But once it is in the wallet, it's pretty much immediate. Like, it only takes, like, another minute or two after that point, right? Yeah, I mean, once you see it in the wallet, like, it should just be a matter of, like, minutes before it's confirmed. Okay. Because yeah, Crypto.com is a, it's an exchange wallet. It's not, like, a private key wallet. Yeah. That, that might be why it's taking a little longer. Yeah, usually it's pretty quick. I use it all the time, but mm. sometimes, you know, things can happen. It's always quicker to do it from like a private key wallet, like MetaMask or something. But all right, I'm gonna get a drink. I'll be right back. Yep, sounds like, it's good. like watching water boil. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, where's my money? I always hate when you send money and you're waiting for it to show up, and you're like, come on. Take a peek on sure your crypto. Got my money. Take a peek on your crypto.com just to see if everything's good on that end. Yeah, I, it told me that it sent. Okay. Let me make sure that it it's fully sent out of there. Yep, it is out. Can you click on it to like go to the blockchain to see if it's like still pending? 
So they'll let you do that? Don't think it lets me do it directly from in this app. What we can do is we can copy your address and take a peek on it right now on the blockchain just to see if it's pending, it's on a pending status or. Yeah, let's I mean, see. I know it's crazy oh, there right it is. Here. See, huh, huh? There we go. I was like, let's just do one more refresh. If that doesn't work, we'll go do that. You were starting to sweat. I saw it. <laughs> well, I've had some times where it's like, okay, this is ridiculous. Like, I know I did it right, but you're starting to make me think if I did it right. <laughs> I sent three Bitcoin one time, Cody, and it was back when, do you remember like in 2017 when like just transactions weren't processing on the Bitcoin blockchain? and like fees were through the roof. I sent three Bitcoin one time and it just totally disappeared for like three days. It was gone. It wasn't even in the mem pool. And then on the fourth day, it just finally got to its destination. Talk about sweating. Yeah, I have I know what you're talking about because I have had it disappear for two days before. So the transfer code. What is the transfer code? That's just my password or? So the transfer code is, so you, when you first made your account, you did an email and password, but then once you set up your wallet, it actually asks you to put in another password. It may or may not have been the same, but it's a different password. Okay. I don't remember doing that. Let's see. There we go. I'll just do that. What I, what I would suggest Cody is, um, you know, once we get off this call, what you can do just for security is, with using your 12 words, you can go into your settings here and actually reset your transfer code to something different than your account password. So that way, yep. just, I mean, if anything ever happened and somebody got in and they got your password, they would still need a different password to be able to send funds. Yep, I'm for sure gonna do that. I've got my 12 word uh, phrase written down, so I'll do that after this. Probably uh, misunderstood something, thought it was making me retype my password or something somewhere. So. Yeah, yeah, no, no biggie. And then you can even use those 12 words and import it to MetaMask so you can interact with like OpenSea and because MetaMask allows you to have a multitude of different private keys attached to it. So to access your node now, Cody, head up to Crypto Cody, your name on the top right. Okay. Click account. It might not show up quite yet, but go down to node info. All right here. Oh, no, not yet. Yep. And just as soon as this, this transaction confirms now, you'll see a little download button where you can download it. So you might have to just refresh it a couple times. Hey, give me two seconds. I just gotta let my dog out. He's whining at the door. I'll be right back. Yep, all good. There we go, that was quick. So now I gotta download it for this. Gotta have Windows 9 or higher. Open. All right. And just to confirm, they have to have Windows 9 or higher. There's there's nothing around that. If they have Windows, if they have Mac, obviously, then for Mac. But Yeah. I mean, I have a Windows 8 computer I tried putting on. It just wouldn't work. Okay. Okay, so that's it. It's just active now. That's it. It's active. And, you know, as your six hours progresses, you'll see your percentage move up. And uh, you can either just keep this on or once it hits the six hours, shut it off. If you plan on keeping it on, um, one thing you should do is definitely adjust your power settings so your computer doesn't go into like hibernation mode. Because if it does, it'll disconnect and this node won't run. Uh, just uh, let me go back. Power and sleep settings, I'm assuming. Yes. Turn off after. Okay, I already got it. No, that's only when it's 
battery power turn off after. Let's see if I can do that. Never. Oops. There we go. So that's what I would have to do. Yep, that's it. This doesn't yeah. matter, right? That's just the screen, right? Uh, no, that's not quite. So the first one was a screen that the. Uh, oh, oops. there. I was reading that wrong. Let's put that back, and let's do sleep actually. Okay, so now it'll never turn off, but the screen can turn off, just not the computer. Correct. And then there's one final thing. There's one setting that I like to do. It's if you type in your settings, find a setting. If you type in LID, lid, you can find a setting that controls what your computer does when you close your lid. So if you can set it to just not shut off when you close your lid, you can just close your computer. Oh, it already it already does it doesn't turn it off perfect perfect so there we go and you can use the computer while you're doing this correct like this doesn't this can be like minimized like that and it still counts absolutely yep you can you can do everything you could normally do it's not going to eat up a lot of your computer resources at this point but i think eventually down the road you might want to have like a just a separate computer one you're not working on, especially once we introduce those consensus mechanisms, you know. Um, so the distribution cycle, um, 9.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is when, if you've had six hours in the previous cycle, you'll get your distribution reward, about 9.15-ish, each night it happens. Okay, and one last question before we, we end this. If I or someone else were to go purchase more nodes, do they have to have different computers for each node? Because eventually they're gonna, the nodes are gonna take up a lot of space on the computer if you wish to optionally do that. Is that gonna be a thing or? Yeah, so the, the node needs to be ran on a unique machine ID. So it has to be on a separate device or you know, if you're someone like in my situation where I have several nodes, I actually run mine on a virtual private server because I don't have enough devices in my house. And my wife kept yelling at me that I was <laughs> using all the computers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, appreciate it. So that's all I had. Appreciate your time. And uh, if there's anything else you want to add, that's just let me know. But that's pretty much all I had. Oh, the uh, yeah, I mean, Facebook group, Discord, like where people can get all the updates. Oh yeah, it's it's definitely really important to um, at least join our company Discord. Uh, you can access that right from your back office. Um, there is like 13,000 people in there all ready to help you understand Townstar, how to play it, um, understand the Node ecosystem. Um, the founders are in there, the developers are in there. It's just a, such a helpful community. 